Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Video Number 2. We now look at bisection method. The basic idea of the bisection method is the following. So given a function f, a continuous function, assume now we sample through the function and we manage to find two values a and b such that the f evaluated a and b take opposite sign. Say one is positive and the other is negative. Then we can conclude that there exists a point, we call it C, which lies between A and B such that F of C equals to zero, meaning there exists a root on the interval from A to B. Why can we claim so? Well, that's because F is a continuous function. And this is the intermediate value theorem from calculus. Well, we can generate an iteration based on this idea. Let's see. Here we describe the procedure. So you need to initialize your iteration. Let's say through some sampling, we manage to find A and B, just as we said earlier, such that the product of F A and F B is negative, meaning F takes opposite signs at A and B. Then there is a root R on the interval such that f at r equals to 0. Now we choose a point c, which is exactly the midpoint on the interval from a to b. This will be a plus b over 2. Now there are a few cases to discuss. If now f of c exactly equals to 0, well, and then we're done. c is a root. And then that's an extremely lucky situation. And in general, it doesn't happen. If f of c is not 0, then we know that um, since f at a and f at b are of opposite sign, f of c would be having opposite sign with one of them. So two cases. If f of c has opposite sign of f of a, then we know there is a root between a and c, and we would pick this interval ac. And also, if now f of c has opposite sign with f of b, then we know there is a root on the interval from b to c, and then we'll pick that interval, cb. So whichever interval you picked will be the new interval for you to start with, and we will iterate the procedure until some stop criteria is satisfied. Okay, let's talk about stop criteria. So what are the conditions that we need to put on our algorithm to stop it, to say that um, either we have found a good enough approximation or possibly something's wrong with that we should stop the iteration. So a first natural criteria would be the interval is small enough at your iteration level k. That is, the b minus a value is less than epsilon. And also, since we are finding the root for the function f, if f evaluated at the midpoint c shall be sufficiently small, say less than epsilon, then c shall be close enough to the root. So this is another criteria. Number three. Now that is an important one to include, just in case something's wrong and your iteration does not converge. That is, you should set a flag for next maximum number of iterations. And if the iteration number reaches that, and no matter what, you stop. Okay, so there's no reason why you cannot combine um, any of these in any possible way that you see fit. So any combination of the previous ones shall be also good choices. Let's do some convergence analysis. So consider an interval from a0 to b0, and let c0 be the midpoint, and let r beyond this interval be a root. So we define the arrow at iteration number 0 to be the arrow between the root and your guess, that's c0. 
Since we don't know where the root is, we only know that the root lies on the interval from a0 to b0, then um, we have to think of the worst possible situation. Since r could lie very close to either a0 or b0, and c0 is the midpoint of the interval, so the worst possible value will be half of the length of the interval. Now we will denote the interval as a n to b n for iteration number n. So for the arrow at iteration number n, it will equal to r, that's your root, minus c n, which is the midpoint, always. And then the arrow estimate, an estimate for this distance, will be, again, by the same reason, half of the length of the interval, that's b n minus a n over 2. We know that the bisection method, after each iteration, the interval length becomes half of the previous ones. So a simple induction will show you that this amount here, if you change it into b0 minus a0, the initial interval, then you have to divide it by 2 to the power n. So joining together with the 2 here, you get 2 to the power n plus 1. And you can write it in terms of the arrow e0, which is here. So this will be e0 over 2 to the power n. Now let's assume we have some error tolerance denoting by it as epsilon. So we need to require arrow n shall be less than epsilon. This means using um, this expression here, so we would have this requirement if after n iterations we want the arrow to be less than epsilon. In order to find the number of iterations needed to achieve the required error tolerance, one will have to solve this inequality. Let's see how we can do it. So if we take natural log on both sides, then we see this becomes a linear equation, thinking of it's an equation of n, and you rearrange the terms, and this will be what you get. So if you take the largest integer value, counting number value of um, the expression on the right-hand side, that would give you the minimum number of steps required to achieve the error tolerance. So since this is our first method, we really don't have a comparison. But um, I can tell you, you trust my word, that this is actually a very, very slow method. However, it's extremely robust, meaning if you manage to find A and B, the initial value for your iteration, it always converges. Okay, so um, in future videos, we will look at some more advanced methods that hopefully converges much faster.